Okay, in this video I'm going to record um, a demo showing the power of events that we've introduced with FME 2012 SP2. Okay, a few slides just to set the, set the stage. Okay, first of all we need to remember what drives the world today. More and more the world today is driven by data. Think about an application, think about your daily life, and you're going to realize that, um, that um, it's all about data. Data drives everything. Okay, so for FME 2012 SP2, um, and as part of this demo, I want you to forget about everything you know about FME Server. I want you to forget about how we traditionally have delivered data to customers. Um, all, obviously, all that is still relevant, but in this demo, we're going to show you a whole new way that is made possible by FME Server 2012. Okay, in fact, we're going to say this is a better way as it gets data to users in a more timely fashion. Okay, so this is welcome to the world of notification services and the subscription model. We introduced this whole event-driven architecture as part of FME 2012. With FME 2012 SP2, we built exciting new um, front-end protocol support, enabling you to do much, much more. Okay, um, the subtitle of this is The Power of Events. David Luckham also wrote a book, and um, it's a very good book, so I recommend that you all check it out, and um, it really uh, gets you thinking about this whole world of events, event-driven architectures, and complex event processing um, in the world today. Okay. Um, the big thing to remember is that what the event brings is if the world is now real-time, real-time data distribution, real-time data movement, getting data to the application and the user as soon as it's available. Built on top of the powerful transformation capabilities of the FME engine. And so with this event-driven architecture leveraging the FME engine, you're able to do all the amazing things that you can do with workspaces, transforming data together, bringing multiple data sets together, bringing in an event from a device, checking it out with your database to add a lot of value. Okay, sensors are also a huge thing. Um, there's a video link um, there um, we could click and if you go to YouTube and look under the sensors playlist you're gonna see what we can do with this exciting technology with sensors as well we bring to the table is this ability to also use the location information of an event every event happened somewhere or is going to happen somewhere ie it has a location Okay. In this model, there's two types of users. The first is a subscriber. These are the people who actually want the data. And how can we get them the data? There's a number of different ways. Um, there could be Twitter, it could be email, it could be their phone, SMS, it could be a web app. Um, the subscribers also doesn't necessarily need to be a person. It could be an application. It could be a sensor itself that's going to do something when it gets this data. Okay. The second type, of course, is the data reporter. And again, they may report data with email using their smartphone, Twitter, SMS, a web app. And again, the data reporter could be a sensor. In fact, in many cases, it's not clear a person out in the field. They could be a, sense, a reporter and a subscriber just basically co collaborating, um, consuming data, sharing data, and, um, you know, in an environment like that. Okay. So, if we look at data distribution, for example, now users would identify what they're interested in. Okay, from a data provider standpoint, this is huge because in the past, all you could do is look at um, historical data requests, and the history, if without any other information, is the best indicator of what people want. But it's not always, or what what's happening, but it's not always the best indicator. The reporter, on the other hand, simply collects data, no concern with who wants the data okay so here we go and um, and basically FME server FME 2012 SP2 makes all this possible okay so here we go the first we're gonna look at we're gonna run through a number of demos now so I'm going to uh, go to a browser here and we have the subscriber so what I'm gonna do is I am going to subscribe to um, some events well I'm in the Vancouver area so I'm going to zoom into the Vancouver area good enough and I'll put a polygon around it you know of course with FME it can be any arbitrary polygon I'm gonna put my email here Don at safe test at gmail.com a Twitter Don at safe uh, 
And sure, start today. I can control the how long my subscription period is a week. I could buffer it. I could specify that the notification area is inside or outside. Um, if I say outside, you know, this could be useful for trucking companies or people who have moving assets who want to be alerted when something leaves an area of interest. Maybe, you know, you have a truck in a zone and the truck should never ever leave that zone. If the truck leaves that zone, that could indicate trouble, could indicate that the truck's been stolen, could indicate it's been hijacked, could indicate you have a rogue driver. Driver. Um, in any event, it's, an, it's of interest, and so the organization would want to try to reach that truck to find out, you know, why why is it, it, it there? Okay, in this case, I'm not going to specify a buffer radius. I'm simply going to say submit. Okay, so now what I've done is I've actually requested that I um, I'm interested in subscribing to data. So if I go to the email for Don at Safe Test, you see that I have a request to receive alerts. Okay, so this means that nobody can just go and um, subscribe to alerts for me um, because I'm going to get an email. And if I get this request and um, I haven't actually requested it, um, I'm going to uh, I'm not going to reply. Okay, now to to activate this, I simply click reply and I send. And so now I've said yes, I am interested in receiving these notification alerts go now I got an email back from the server telling me that my subscription is now activated if I want to unsubscribe I could click here and now my my subscription is off so I'm not going to get any further further um, subscription notices okay so that's um the first so that's what the subscription workflow looks like okay so now we're here so we've also built a workflow for the reporter so the to report an event here very similar I'm going to zoom into the Vancouver area wrong way and I'm going to simply put a report in okay so I'll zoom in doesn't really matter here I'm gonna go here and the reporter is let's do a different email address doesn't really matter in this case I'm gonna say pothole here there is a nasty pothole here it has caused several flats and damaged some vehicles okay and um, I could put a URL here if I wanted okay so we'll zoom in a little tighter and we'll say that it's right here I'm gonna put a pinpoint around it oh I'm gonna buffer it let's buffer it by 10 meters okay so we'll zoom in even further okay it's right here and we're going to click okay and I'm going to submit it okay and there we go we can see the buffer has been sent in so that's um so somebody's going to come um there and uh there we go so now if i go back to um my email here okay and i go back look at that i have an email well i got a notification alert that there was a severity 5 web thing um and i can see um, it says pothole here. There's a nasty pothole. If I scroll down, it actually shows, gives me a static map showing me where that is. So I can go like that, and you can see there's my uh, my pinpoint showing me that exactly where it is. Okay, and of course, if I want to see all the, it also gives me the ability to see all the events that have ever been logged. There we go, and there you go. So you can see all the events that have ever been logged and if I zoom out you can see there's been a number of them and over the next while I'm sure when people get this um, they too will will register and add notifications and I incur okay so that's the reporter okay but wait there's more we've also added this ability for you to take photos and mail them to an FME server so in this case if you take a photo and I'm gonna take a photo and I'm gonna mail it to photo at alert demo dot safe dot dot com so what you're going to see now is you see my screen there, my iPhone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take a picture with my camera, okay, of um, a KVM switch here, okay, in my office. I'm going to take a picture. There it is. Okay. And now I'm going to mail that picture. There it is. There's a picture I took. Okay. So we're going to get rid of that. Okay. Now I've sent the picture in. And now again, I go back to my my email address if I go to my Gmail I'll look at that I have an email and this tells me that there was a new notification alert if I click on this I can actually see the photo okay there's the photo of the KVM switch okay 
and I again can see all the photos that have been logged and again every time I get a notification I get the opportunity to and subscribe. I also get a picture of where that photo was taken. So now you can imagine, you know, people in the field. This can be useful for Crime Stoppers, graffiti, potholes. Again, a user can take a picture, mail it in. Automatically, we have a picture of the pothole. We um, we also know the timestamp, the location. You know, very useful for people to figure out what they need to do to to fix the problem. Okay, so there's that's that. So now we're going to go back to our slideshow, but wait, there's more. Okay, we've also written two iPhone apps. Okay, this is the first time SAFE has ever written an iPhone app, and these are demonstration apps that are geared towards showing you the power of um, notifications. So, again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share these so you can see what it looks like. Go to the Reporter app. Okay, and the reporter app is very simple. I simply specify the FME server host. I specify a log, some login information. Okay, and I specify a message. Office construction. We are having construction here today. Okay, and I could say is ongoing or something. Okay, and um, I can say done. We also have if the person's moving, we have this time interval. So we could send a um, time every a notification every 10 seconds or we can control how long it's going to be. Okay, and we also have ended with that a distance filter. So if a person's moving, you may not want him to send a notification unless he moves a certain number of um, meters okay so you can um, basically decide how many meters you want to move and only when the person moves say you know a kilometer you could basically set it like that and so now the person would move every time you know he moves um, a thousand meters or a kilometer again to reduce the data and only make sure and make sure you're able to decide what you want to get okay so once I do that um, I could say start and then what would happen is that every time I moved a kilometer I would um, a message would be sent I can also just click the send button okay and then it's going to drop another pin saying safe office construction okay there we go. And um, you also see the second app up there, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But uh, I go back to here and we go to here. If I again, if I go to my notification, look at that. There's a safe office construction notification. And again, I can see all the alerts um, there. And again, it sends me a picture telling me exactly, showing me exactly where it is. And here is the um, the content there. I could have put in a URL if I wanted, but in this case I didn't I didn't do that. Okay, so now back to our presentation here. We've also the second app is called an FME Alerter app. And what that does, okay, is again we're going to go to Air Server here. Okay. I'm going to start that one. And again, what that does is that has similar settings. Alert demo, Apple Push is the subscriber on this one. I can look and see all the various um, available subscriptions. And um, okay, when that's done now, now what I see is I actually see um, the alerts as they come in. So there was a web one, so I can see where that was. Okay, popcorn, work event. Okay, I can see that there. Okay some photo ones okay you can see them there those are ones we did with customers other photo ones there okay you get the idea I'm able to see all the alerts I could remove them as well okay and that just shows you the um, all the alerts that uh, happen so again if I drop this one here okay boom you're going to see on the screen you're going to see the nice thing about alerts is whether it's running or not I can click that and um, I'm going to see the safe ops office construction one. Boom, there. And I can click there. Okay, and there. And if, here's another one. Okay, that was a web report. If you want to click the photo, this is, shows you ones that have URLs. Okay, if it has a URL, in this case it has a URL to a photo. I can simply click that and then I can see the photo um, right on my right on my screen just like that so that's the um, the way that works and um, that is FME 2012 SP2 just giving you a taste of some of the things we can do with 
all our notification stuff that we've built. Okay. Off on um, possibilities. First thing to remember is, is that <clears throat> these report, these notifications, these, these things that trigger notifications can come from anything. Could come from an application that runs and then posts events when some things are discovered. Um, this can just save huge amounts of time. You can imagine dispatchers, people interested in things, you know, this can help them know exactly where to look and no longer do people need to search. They're going to be told where things are want. Um, some of the things you could do, um, you could replace the subscription period of the subscriber with a schedule. So then they they could this you know because for traffic for example they might only want to know about traffic events when they're actually in their car okay um, on the way to work so they could register those areas and then um, do that subscriber area of interest could be based on subscriber position so it'd be very simple for as the subscribers moving around <clears throat> to actually have his area of interest move along and follow him okay and of course the alerts could be based on relative positions of different things so you know, you might not be interested in where your trucks are, but you might be interested if all your if you have too many trucks that are servicing that are all in the same area because or emergency vehicles, things like that, because then that would mean that you're there's less coverage in other places. And, you know, the easiest way is to have some alerts telling people, hey, you know, probably you're too close to other vehicles um, or too dense in one spot, things like that. And, um, of course, the imagination uh, just boggles here. Um, you can do many, many things. The exciting thing is, too, with the scalability of FME Server, this can easily scale from the smallest system up to um, the largest system. And, again, with anything, we're building this to plug into other technologies. So if there's messaging technologies you want to plug into, FME Server can generate the events and, and feed them. Okay, and uh, please do reach out. Let us know what you think. Tweet about it. Share it with people. Give us feedback. Um, the apps will be available in the App Store shortly. And then you two can play around and let us know what you think. Thank you.